we actually got told to go to this area by uh, locals, family friends that live in Quenelle and they used to hunt this years ago. They're older and retired now so like they're not into going out into God's back 40 so much so but they say it was awesome. Again lo and behold we haven't seen anything at all so and that would explain a fair bit because they got nothing to actually feed off come winter time. You know, we just have to find better ways of, of living on this earth than what we're doing now. Uh, I think the bigger corporations that make the bigger impacts definitely have to uh, really buckle down and say, okay, this is, this is you know, we're, we're gonna actually do this in a better way. And, and when that happens, then things will improve. But until that happens, or until the government forces them to, it's not gonna happen, and it's a real shame. Well, aspen is an incredibly important tree for <clears throat> cavity nesting birds and there's about uh, over 32 species of cavity nesting birds and mammals in this area and 96% of the aspen, of the nests that <clears throat> were used were in aspen trees. So aspen only represent about 15% of the trees in the areas on our study sites and yet it was very much strongly the tree of choice because um, uh, there was such a predominance for all uh, birds and mammals. And very clearly, the fauna of the of the mixed wood is enriched dramatically by having uh, having aspen in it. Uh, forests that have an aspen component have many more species than forests that don't. Um, well, I also had a student a few years ago who worked on land snails and, you know, the diversity, there's it's not, not many land snails that live here, but a surprising number, they're all small, but there are 12 or so species of land snails that live in the boreal. And uh, of those, all but, all but two of them are pretty much excluded from coniferous forest, probably because of the acidity. So, uh, you know, the, the aspen is very, very important for many elements of northern biodiversity. I think that goes true, or holds true for, uh, for vertebrates too. I mean, the, the uh, aspen trees support an enormous fauna of various kinds of defoliators that are important for songbirds, for example. And spruce has some too, but they're mainly small tortricids, so it's only warblers that do well with them. Uh, but, you know, the big fat, larvae that, that things like to eat are, are mainly on aspen trees. So they become a very important base of the food chain for parts of the biota that people recognize and, and, uh, and, and value. If you look at moth assemblages, for example, much more rich, species rich, in, uh, in aspen forest than in, uh, than in coniferous forest. Uh, so, pretty important component for the biodiversity of the system.
This is crazy, Jamie. I never realized it flattened things this bad. But this really flattened it out. I mean, there's only vegetation growing in here is the, the trees. And they, they talk about us having to uh, leave 50% of the vegetation for our uh, for the wildlife when our cattle are grazing out here. And there's not even grazing here for the cattle, let alone 50% for the wildlife. All the green vegetation in the bottom, this is what it's supposed to be like. Not a desolated area where they have sprayed. More rose bushes, fireweed, more rose bushes, more blueberries that are blooming. I mean, this is what we should have. All of a sudden, I'm into an area that was sprayed. Whole pile of trees, a bit off the top of it. There's no regrowth, there's no nothing. The moose didn't even get any food value out of that dry wood. Where, where he was eating on that alder tree over there, he had food value. There's nothing here for our wildlife at all. Nothing. All I know is ridiculousness when you, <clears throat> the forest, you think they can do this, and uh, we can't. Oh, there's a fireweed, but look at this fireweed. He's, he got enough stuff on him last year. It may not have killed him, but it's, he's all deformed this year.